Hello, welcome to the place on the internet. I talk about comics. Actually, the place on YouTube. I talk about comics on the internet uh, too many places and too often. Uh, today, I am uh, broadcasting from my favorite place in the United States, which is uh, Ocean Beach, San Diego, uh, specifically the dog park. It's kind of like, you know, down market hippies. Uh, it, it, for whatever reason, I feel very at peace here. Uh, I've never been a hippie. I just, I'd, I guess shopping at co-ops from a young age this is just my normal uh <clears throat> but i like it here and uh hopefully that'll keep me in a good mood because this is the third uh effort at this video and to prevent myself from going long this time i've only allowed uh the battery on this to be 40 percent. <laughs> so <laughs> wherever we're at when when it dies is where we're at i'm going to answer a question part of why i went long before is because i read the whole question i'm just going to uh, uh summarize it here on my Substack, I wrote about <clears throat> my wife asking me, why are you still in comics? It seems like people aren't interested in expressing themselves and they aren't interested in making money. And that's, I mean, why stick around? Good question. Uh, it's hard to explain to somebody why you, you love a medium, right? Because most people don't love mediums, even if they feel strongly about, oh, I, I see a lot of movies or I play a lot of video games. They don't, uh, for whatever, probably a healthy reason, they haven't tied any part of their identity to their love of of that particular thing someone responded to my wife's question and said hey uh your wife is right but why not instead of uh uh attach instead of walking away from comics why don't you walk away from this industry uh where uh there's just too much it's been co-opted by too many bad actors there's uh too much negativity in it why not just go your own way uh, sell uh, direct, right? That, that, that's this person's contention. I think the name is Crimson Mask. This is me responding to you. Thank you very much for the input. Um, so, why not? <clears throat> okay. I just want to quickly say that there has been a couple of high profile successes uh, in crowdfunding and uh, selling direct that have made it look easy. I'm not suggesting that you're saying it, the Crimson Mask, that it's easy, but. Uh, some people get that impression, and it, and it is so far from it. When you're looking at guys like uh, like Eric July, is a YouTuber who has transitioned into comics and met with great success. So he had 10 years of commentary YouTube where people were engaged with his personality, and when he said, hey, I'm doing a comic, they said, <clears throat> I I have all the trust in the world in this guy. But that he'll be, he'd be the first to tell you, I'm sure, that's a decade-long journey of a lot of not comics. Right, <clears throat> he went from one success, but a very, but a very uh, hard-earned success, uh, having a, a career on YouTube, to another type of success. Now, it is true that everything that you do stacks, not equally, but it all stacks. So if you're good at one thing and you've established yourself, then of course you have a, a slightly better chance of reaching people in a new th new thing if you tie them together. That's just a fact. Uh, I should be doing this in music, but uh, I, I don't know why I, uh, I have like a real resistance to it. I, I think it's because uh, I tend to not take people that do two things seriously, and I think most people don't. And that's unfortunate, but I think that's the reality. Uh, and I've always endeavored to be taken seriously, which ties into the larger question, why do I care about these people? So. You have two issues here, uh, as so far as I see it. You have this idea that uh, uh, comics are beyond reform, direct market comic books are beyond reform, and you have to uh, splinter off and exist a, either parallel to them or completely uh, away from them. Okay, let's examine that really quickly. You might be right. It is very difficult to uh, change the tires on a vehicle uh, when it is in motion. Uh, would it be more advisable for us to... Uh, just stop that car, get on to another one, or jump off a moving car, perhaps. Maybe. <clears throat> but to do the other thing, and this is the part I wanted to hammer, to do the other thing requires so much that I would consider not creative, not comics, uh, and not in any way edifying or fulfilling. Now, in July's case, it seems like he has a natural inclination towards entrepreneurship and being a business person, and God bless him. That's not me. Uh, you can tell anybody that I've been in business with, it is a struggle 
to get me to uh, watch margins. I would rather blow the budget and create something great uh, and feel good about it. <clears throat> and simply put, that is not how uh, life works, <laughs> right? So I, at every instinct, I have to not agree to paying my favorite uh, collaborators uh, a lot of money. I have to pay, I have to uh, struggle not to hire the guys that are uh, outside my range and doing covers and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm just not terribly business minded. So is, are my efforts better uh, expended on creative endeavors or splitting my time with this thing that I don't enjoy on any level <laughs> and also uh, I'm not good at? It. Well, if your response is, it's what has to be done, okay, maybe. Maybe I, I don't, I'm not convinced we're there yet, but I, I, here's what I am convinced of that forcing creative people into entrepreneurial roles is a recipe for disaster. Uh, it's taken me a decade to get any good at th the business of comics. I was decent as a writer out the gate. It took me a long time to be good. I'm now decent. <laughs> bad being a, uh, a a business person it takes a lot of time and <clears throat> I think it would be fair for someone to accuse that as uh, of being a waste of time so uh, I think that that's an important aspect of this is that uh, when we look at the successes that some people have had we're not accounting for all the time put in uh, and again time put into something that only thrills some of us so that's that's a uh, I should I should point out that I have a background in DIY, I mean just DIY, everything that I've done in my life up to this point has required some uh, measure of, of uh, self-starting. So in music, <clears throat> you know, I've, I've uh, pressed my own records, I've uh, uh, pr uh, been a show promoter, I've uh, booked tours, uh, th there's very little that I haven't done. But I hated every minute of all of it. <laughs> you know I mean? For me, the 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 joy is the self-expression. Everything else, I I would just go get a job as a banker if that's. I mean, all things being equal, why wouldn't I just pursue a job in finance where I could make real money and take care of my family in, in a very secure way? Uh, so, and then do comics for my joy, right? But many of us, and again, if your point is yeah, but the world is changing, then okay, uh, but. Many of us are good at one thing and making ourselves a, a um, an engine of that thing exclusively may not be the best, uh, the best path in terms of uh, having a, a, you know, being a capable person that, is, that can handle multiple situations, but it does mean that we're going to excel at something and it would take an exceptional human being to be truly great at multiple things. Some people are. But not me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Certainly not me. Uh, I've been in music for 20 years. I'm fucking terrible at it. Like, objectively terrible at it. I just enjoy it a lot, right? Now, I happen to be good at comics. So, uh, to me, to now split my efforts a, a third direction and make myself a business person uh, j just feels like a complete uh, missed opportunity to, to be exceptional at the thing that I actually have devoted myself to for 10 years. So, whatever. This is all to say, uh, <clears throat> I hear your criticisms uh, that, hey, Dave Sim did it. We've got a new generation of, of guys, uh, w whether it be Iron Spike doing the the uh, uh, crowdfunding or, or, or Eric July doing uh, kind of like a... I mean, he did a really smart job. He, he circumvented the, the uh, normal crowdfunding avenues. Uh, it is, it is, so he's almost direct, but, it, but whatever the case is, you have these models and you have these people that are doing really impressive things with those models. I get it. But for many of us, our model is, is creative output. And to split our time and our intellectual capacity in other directions, particularly things that we don't enjoy or find edifying, uh, feels wasteful and takes us off our mission. But again, to the Crimson Mask who wrote the, the question, it's possible that we're all going to find ourselves there, right? And uh, certainly at this point in my career, I'm not doing what I do for uh, the approval of people that I think are semi-literate, right? So when you say, 
you know you don't have you don't have to be uh, betrothed to the to to that industry to the industry as it exists today. You don't have to uh, be lashed to it. Uh, I agree. I'm not trying to please those people. I'm trying to find an audience of people that get it and uh, just lock that down. But simply because I'm not seeking the approval of the direct market as as an entity does not mean that the direct market has no utility for me. Uh, I also agree with you that perhaps we have reached this this uh, uh, this inflection point, I suppose, where the art is fully divorced from the economics of uh, of uh, of art market, right? That what is being foisted on the public is of no interest to them. I th I think you're probably correct in that. Or at least that's how it feels, right? We're missing the mark at the very least, right? Cre uh, the corporations are missing the mark by a wide margin. Uh, individual creators are missing the mark at least uh, somewhat, uh, because none of us want to believe that just the medium of comics is is evaporating. Uh, and if that's the case, yeah, perhaps it is wise for some of these guys to seek uh, their audiences outside of comics entirely. And maybe there is some part of me that still wants the approval of somebody that I think is well-read in comics. I, I And maybe that's a weakness on my part. I, I've endeavored, and what I want to do is find people that I think are on the same level as me in that and uh, have, if not community, because I don't necessarily value that, at least uh, mutual respect. And that is where Crimson Mask... Uh, person who asked, asked the question, you might be right about all this. Maybe that's completely worthless. Maybe that's out the window at this time, and I'm hanging on to a remnant of an idea. Um, it's possible. Uh, these are things to examine. <clears throat> I just wanted to say that as a guy who has DIY'd, I mean, I've printed my own comics as well. Uh, it, 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 as a guy who has DIY'd uh, pretty much every aspect of, of their interests uh, at one point or another, I think... I've learned for myself that there is uh, real utility to offloading uh, these responsibilities to people who are uh, experienced or enjoy them. That part, I think, is critical. Now, if you want to say, yeah, but they suck at them. That's a, I mean, we'll have that conversation soon. <laughs> but thank you for the question. Uh, continue your questions uh, either in the comments section or at my Substack. That's Patrick Hinland's Substack, whatever. Uh, and I appreciate uh, all the kind words that people had uh, regarding the last uh, video and the last newsletter. Uh, thank you again uh, for uh, giving me your time and interacting with me in this way. Uh, we're we're uh, trying to arrive at something where it's conversational uh, in a space that you know is kind of sometimes demanding that we uh, just bark at each other. So, thank you.